Good evening, everyone. So we're holding by Pirek Tess of Igar It's on page 196. And slowly, slowly, we're, we're getting there. We're almost finished Igar Satshuva. Very timely learning for um, the time that we're in now, Elul approaching Tishrei. So last week, we started talking about Tshuva Yilah. We finished talking about Tshuva Tata, and last week we started talking about Tshuva Yilah. So Tshuva Tata is mending that which was broken, cleaning that which was stained. The neshama that we are given at birth is holy, is pure, and through our faulty choices, we cause damage to the neshama, we cause damage to the shechina. The lower level of tshuva is, uh, is a fixed job. The higher level of tshuva is not fixing, but it's reattachment and reconnection. It's also fixing in a way, but it's fixing not the avera, it's fixing that which happened when the neshama came down into the guf, at which point the neshama became a metzias, it became something, it became an identity, as opposed to the way it was before Hashem breathed it into the body, at which point it was one with Hashem, and at oneness with Hashem, it was not a metzias of its own. And that's what Tshuva Elah is trying to accomplish. How is Tshuva Elah accomplished? Through Hey Elah, the higher Hey, which is Bina, which is through learning Torah. And why is that? Because when we learn Torah, we are connecting to Hashem on His terms. We're connecting to truth. We're becoming completely bottled to Hashem. Before davening, we say, Hashem sfasai tiftach ufi yagi lasacha. Hashem, open up my lips and let my mouth speak your praises. It's almost like Hashem is speaking. We're asking Hashem to speak through us. And whenever we're studying Torah, in essence, that's really what's happening. Because, and we talked about this last week, our midas, our emotions are trapped. Usually, we'll see that there are exceptions maybe, but you, um, our instinctive emotions and impulses, our likes, our dislikes, that's all about me. That's all about who I am, what I feel. Torah is me connecting to something higher than me. It's me connecting to Hashem. And when I'm studying Torah, I'm becoming one with Torah, I'm becoming one with Hashem. As my neshama was one with Hashem before my neshama came down here. And that's again something which is unique to Torah. An advantage that Torah has over all other mitzvahs, that the unity that we create with Hashem. Because again, seichel, the ob objective seichel has the ability to connect to something outside of itself. In this case, being the Torah and being Hashem and connecting to Hashem, that's something which is unique to Torah. Now, the Alter Rebbe quoted a Zayar, which the Zayar says that the study of Torah has to be bidchilu urechimu de kuchabrichu. We learned this last week, which means with awe and love for Hashem. And then the Alter Rebbe also says that this is bina, which is ben yudke. Ben yudke means the children of yudke. And the children of Yudke are the emotions. We know Yudke is Chachma and Bina. The Yud is Chachma and the He is Bina. Ben Yudke, in other words, the word Bina, when you transfigure the letters, becomes Ben Yudke. So Bina includes not only Bina, but also the children, which is the Midas, which that is the Dechilu or Rechimu, the love and the fear of Hashem. And we're going to expand on that a little right now in Perik Tess. What does this mean? Why do we have to involve our Midas? If our purpose is, after all, is connecting to Hashem, and Midas are self-centered, so don't Midas get in the way of Tshuva Ilah? Aren't they irrelevant to Tshuva Ilah? If Tshuva Ilah, Ilah is me abandoning my Metzias, abandoning who I am and reconnecting to Hashem, so I should be studying Torah in a purely objective, intellectual, um, cerebral uh, way without any emotions, because emotions is me. And if I'm me, I'm already, I'm already disconnected from Hashem. So why does the Zayr emphasize the importance of learning Torah with Midas when the Chayra, the whole idea of Tshuva Ilah is to forget about myself and to completely be subsumed in Hashem. That's what we're going to talk about right now. Peirik Tas. Ubiyar Inyan, the explanation of this which we just spoke about in the end of Peirik Tas. Kamei Shekasov, Bezeir HaKadosh, Vitikunim, Bekama Mekaymes. 
Alter Rebbe is going to quote something which is brought down in the Zoyar and in Tikkuni Zoyar in, in several places. Debina ihi truva ilah, as mentioned, right? Truva ilah is connected to bina. And what is bina? Bina is va'im revetzes alho efreichem v'chulum. This is a pasuk in Parshas Kiseitze. Ki yikari kan siper lefanecha, right? That if you counter a, um, you counter a nest, va'im revetzes alho efreichem, and the mother is hovering, or uh, how would you translate revetzes? Is lying upon, shielding al hafrechem on the chicks. Bina is the aim. Bina is the mother. We know that um, when you learn Hasidus, you learn Kabbalah, you realize that everything in the Torah, you know, when we're learning it and translating it in the simple level, when we're talking about Kikari, Kan Sipar, and we're talking about a bird, and we're talking about chicks. But we know that famously the Shalah says, The Torah is really talking about spiritual realities and alludes to physical realities. So the physical realities the Torah describes are actually only nishtalshal from, they are manifestations, lowly manifestations of the higher spiritual realities which the Torah is really talking about. So when the Torah talks about Ve'em Revetz Salafrechem, it's a reference to Bina. Aim habanim smecha is the sphere of bina, as we know that in Kabbalah, whenever you talk about Kabbalah, has um, has a very strong belief in the nuclear family, and you bump into it all the times. You have zachar and akeva, you have male and female, abba ve'ima. You have the father and the mother, and the son and the son and the daughter. The father is chachma, the mother is bina, and the children are the midos, and more specifically. Ahava is the son, and Yira is the daughter. You know, um, the Tzemach Tzedek, the grandson of the Balatanya, so he has a sefer called Derech Mitzvah Secha. The sefer Derech Mitzvah Secha, I'm sure if I turn around, it's somewhere right around there. Yeah, right over there, third shelf over there. Yeah. The great book, no. And it's, um, it, he basically takes many mitzvahs, I don't know, maybe 50 or 60 different mitzvahs, and explains them according to Chassidus and according to Kabbalah. So first, uh, normally, he'll quote from the Taimi HaMitzvahs from Rav Chaim Vital, which explains the reasons according to Kabbalah. And if you ever looked in Taimi HaMitzvahs, you don't understand anything over there. <laughs> but then, he actually, he takes those concepts and he brings them down. And it's actually a very, very understandable, relatable, relatable sefer. It's actually one of the first svarim that in the Chabad Yeshivas of Chassidus, they'll study is Derech Metzvah because it's written in a very user-friendly fashion explaining the mitzvahs, so... Uh, has it been translated? Yes, it has been translated. And right. maybe even the translation is over here in the library. Not only is it translated, but also, if you look right next to it, there's three brown svarim, which is like explaining it in Hebrew, in more modern Hebrew, if, like, if you're comfortable with that. There's three over there, and a fourth one already came out also. But it's also, I don't know if the entirety of it's, of it's been translated, but selection, definitely certain mitzvahs have been translated. I believe at least two svarim in English on it. So... And it's fascinating when you learn a mitzvah that you understand what it's really, really about. And you understand what the Arizal meant. But there's a whole, there are several mitzvahs over there which deal with the Arroyes, which deal with the different uh, forbidden relationships, um, inter-family forbidden uh, intimate relationships. And as it turns out, this all has to do with spheres. <laughs> the brother, the sister, the father, the mother, and the different unions which can happen, which cannot happen. It's all about spheres. So again, Torah is really talking about spiritual realities. But the physical realities in this world are what's called hishtalshulus. They actually are, I don't, I don't want to say reflections of, they're emanations of, on a lower level, of the spiritual realities. So therefore, that which is true in the spiritual realities is also, it's not like the Torah is saying two separate things. Well, this is true over here and it's true over there. Because it's true in the higher level and because the lower level is merely a mirror image, a dimmer mirror image of the higher level, so automatically anything that's true on the higher level is also going to be true on the lower level. So when the Torah talks about... When the Torah talks about... Um, Again, about the Ephraim and the, and, the, and the aim, the mother and the chicks. So the mother is a reference to Bina. So Chachma is the father, Bina is the mother. And the reason why is because, I mean, this is something which we've talked about many times, Chachma and Bina, it's a recurring theme in Chassidus. Chachma is when you're exposed to something. 
Bina is you're processing that which you were exposed to, and the result of that processing is the emotions. In other words, um, intellectually, there's, uh, you're exposed to something and then you mentally process it and make, make sense out of that which you've just been exposed to, that, that which you just experienced or seen or heard from someone or an idea that was uh, mentioned. You take it, you process it. But the Mida is ultimately the emotions that follow that intellectual thing. Let's say uh, you hear something nice about someone, so you're going to start having a warm feeling towards someone. If you hear something or you see something which is not nice about someone, you're going to start having feelings of gvura towards that person. So the first thing is the exposure, that you're exposed to what happens. Then you mentally process it. And from the mental processing comes the midas. So that's why Chachma is called the father and Bina is called the mother. Just like in, 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 human, uh, in human terms, the father supplies the, the tipa, the drop of sperm, which is then developed by the mother, and the child is a result of the mother developing the DNA of the supplied by the father, obviously, along with including also the DNA of the mother. So Bina is the mother and Chachma is the father. So you have when you're talking about Bina, Bina is referred to Aim Revetzas Al Ephraim. So sometimes you have Bina, the mother, and then you have the children, and sometimes the children. As the famous expression is in English, right? That you could be an empty nester. Right? My children are at the age where, at least in the summer, I become an empty nester every single year. And Emri Vetis Allah is not a state of empty nest, uh, nestedness. Emri Vetis Allah means the mother is hovering upon, shielding upon, lying upon. In other words, the mother's influence and nurture and care are very, very much felt by the, by the chicks. So it's not just that we have our mother and chicks, but there's also... The Eim Revetus Allah implies a certain very strong, dependent, reliant, contingent relationship which the children have on the mother, in this case the Midas on, on Bina. What does that mean? The Hainu inside, three lines on the top of the Perik. The Hainu, this means when a person contemplates the greatness of Hashem. With deep concentration, right? As we do, as we've discussed many times, that as much as the Alter Rebbe tells us to do this, it's something which is difficult, and uh, human beings resist it. The idea of th- taking a concept and sitting with yourself and thinking about something deeply, anything, but that's what's demanded. When a person thinks, not only thinks about the greatness of Hashem, but really deeply processes it. And gives birth from the Bina, gives birth to awe of Hashem and fear of Hashem, which are intellect based, in other words, based on that which you understand. And you understand it and you feel it well. I want to skip three lines. I'm going to come back. I just want to. Then it's called Aim Revetsis Allah and then it's called Aim Revetsis Allah And now let's go back to what we skipped. So again, is when a person contemplates the greatness of Hashem and gives birth from that intellectual love and fear. As the Pasuk says, We have to love Hashem. And the love of Hashem encompasses our entire life, the Gamer. And the person does not only suffice with the natural love for Hashem, which is hidden in the heart of every Yid. And the same is also true regarding awe. The different types of awe. There's pachad, which is more of an intellectual fear. There's yira, a busha, which is a sense of shame from Hashem. As is known. Okay. We know this is discussed at length in Lakuti Amar Tanya, that within every single Yid, there's what's called an Ava Mesuteras to Hashem. There's a, hit love, a love for Hashem which is hidden within every single Yid. That's uh, also known as the Pintle Yid. And this love for Hashem that is at the core of every single Yid is so, so powerful 
the fact that you didn't give up their life al kiddush Hashem, that when the Yid is asked to reject his Yiddishkeit at the pain of death, the Yid in no way, shape, or form is able to or willing to abandon Hashem, abandon Torah, abandon Yiddishkeit, reject and repudiate Torah. It's not a logical thing. It's based on this most deep, innate, inherent, instinctual love that we have, every Yid has at the core, which is a Yerusha that we have from Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And in the Kuti Amarim, the Alter Rebbe talks about how to leverage this love in our daily life. We have access it. We say leverage, what do you mean? Access it? Uh, I, the word leverage is more precise. In other words, as Dr. Rebbe explains in Perik Yudtes and Tanya, that this love generally is asleep. It's asleep. It's not active. If it was active in us 24 7, then we'd all be tzaddikim. But as we all know, there are some of us who aren't tzaddikim. Right? The secret's to be told. And that's because this powerful connection and love for Hashem is hidden. When does this love come to the forefront? It comes to the forefront when it, when it is directly challenged and threatened. When a person comes and says, are you willing to disconnect from Hashem? That's when this love suddenly awa it awakens from its slumber and says, absolutely not. Loi mit so how do we make use of this love in our daily, in our daily life? So this is something which is, this is the topic that Dr. Rebbe talks in Tanya in Kuti Amarim from chapters 18 through chapters 25, Yud Ches through Peir Chafei. Reuven, I'm sure, remembers it all. <clears throat> and Dr. Rebbe explains that we can when we're facing a Nesoyin in any area of Torah mitzvah, even a small mitzvah kaviyacho, we can think to ourselves, what do you mean? I love Hashem. I'd be willing to give my life for Hashem. I'm going to be so silly. I'm going to do this, uh, this Avera. I'm going, to be so, I'm going to be so silly and be a little lazy to do a mitzvah. And again, this is discussed at length in Lakuti Amarim. But the point being is that we have the ability to leverage this love. In other words, the knowledge that we have this love is a tool in our arsenal with which we can fight the Nebuchadnezzar Bahamas. As great as this love is, there's a problem with this love. The problem with this love is that because it's a avativis, because it's a natural love, in the words Dr. Rebbe says, the avativis, he describes it as a natural love. It's natural to every single yid. What's the problem with something being natural? If it's natural, then it's me. And if it's me, then even if it's holy, it's not Shuvah Yilah. Because the whole point of Shuvah Yilah is to lose my identity. Not only my unholy identity, even my holy identity. Ultimately, any identity whatsoever, any me whatsoever prevents me from becoming at one with Hashem. So this love, this avativis is unbelievable. But for Shuvah Yilah, it's not going to work. It's not going to work for Shuvah Yilah. When, if you can tap into your avativis, even if you're able to live with your avativis 24-7, you'd be a tremendous tzaddik perhaps, but not a baltshufa. You wouldn't be at the level of tshuva ilah, which is a negation of self. Tshuva ilah is a negation of self and a completely being nichal and subsumed and united with Hashem. For that you need ava sikhlis. For that you need to have a ava which is based on seichel, which is not natural to you. In our life, there are certain things that are natural. Natural means something I'm born with. So for example, a child doesn't need to be taught to eat. A child doesn't need to be taught to sleep. A child doesn't need to be taught that when, so when, when it gets hurt, chas v'shalom, to cry. These are certain things which are innate and natural. But if you take a little baby and put it on the top floor on the roof of a skyscraper and leave it alone, is it gonna go off the side? Very possibly, because it doesn't naturally know not to go off a roof. A little child doesn't naturally know not to put their hand in fire. These aren't natural. These are learned things. Meaning, they're not natural. This is something when I am exposed to a certain truth, which is that fire burns and that falling down is something which is very dangerous. 
that truth which I'm connecting to, which is a truth outside of me, it's not an innate truth. Again, children don't have it naturally. That has an impact on me, on all of me. It impacts my, my midas, it'll impact my behavior, etc. But that's the child tapping into a truth which is outside of it. Torah is our tapping Torah and our zbrinus, our mind has the ability to tap into a truth which is beyond it. That's we discussed the Maila of the Min Hamidaber, the Maila of the of the human being is the ability not to be stuck in itself. And that comes through Seichel. And in fact, that's one of the reasons why we're called Medaber. What makes us unique from animals is Medaber, our ability to communicate with others. And, ca- and true communication doesn't just mean that I'm saying hi and you're saying hello. And I ask you, how are you doing today? And you say, Baruch Hashem. That's not, the, that's not communication. Real communication is the ability for me to be able to actually leave myself and be able to see things from your perspective hear you, truly hear you, put myself aside and truly hear you, and vice versa. That is, but that's only with the Koyach of Seichel. When we learn Torah, we are connecting to a truth which is outside of us, and this truth, this Torah, this is Bainanos, is Hashem. What happens when I study Torah, and when I study Chassidus, and I contemplate the greatness of Hashem, and that gives birth to midas within me, Avas Hashem and Yiras Hashem. Those midas that are born is Emri Vetzas Aloha Freichem, meaning that the mother's influence is profoundly felt on the children. The mother is still hovering there. These midas have some of the characteristics of Seichel, they're Bittel Dika Midas. So, for example, if I have a natural feeling, so natural feelings also need some thought to, to, uh, to evoke them. But once the thought evokes the mida, then there's an empty nest. The mida takes off on its own. The mida, the influence of the thought isn't so felt on, on the mida. That's when I, the Midah exists already within me, and the thought, for example, like in the Ava Mesuteras, the, the thinking is only there to tap into, to leverage, or to be able to, re, to, uh, to reveal something within me. But when the Midah is completely created by the Seichel, then you have Emre Vetzas Alo Afroichim, then what you have a situation is that yes, I love Hashem, and yes, I fear Hashem, but because this love and fear is based on my Torah, on my Yisbaninus, which is a truth which is outside of me, it's not an egotistical love and fear. The love and fear is all about Hashem, it's not about me. And that's why the love and the fear, when the, when the Zoyar says that a person, the Tshuva Ilah is the Yisasek Be'eraisa, that a person should study Torah by Dechilu or Rechim with love and fear, that's not an egotistical love and fear. That's a love and fear, a love and fear that is born from his Yisbaninus and Seichol, and that's a bitl Dika Avanir. Let's do this inside again, you'll see how it works in the words of the Altar Let's start again actually from the Hainu, three lines from the top. The Hainu, this means, when a person contemplates the greatness of Hashem, contemplating it deeply. The person um, causes to be born from their Bina, an intellectual love and fear of Hashem. And because the person, and the person really understands it well, and then we have that which is said, that you love Hashem, Mishum And this love penetrates and permeates your entire life. It permeates also your midas. And if this is a person who is doing this, and the person does not suffice, with the natural love which is hidden. And the same thing is the same thing is when it comes to awe of Hashem, fear of Hashem. Also, when the person does not suffice with the natural fear that he has for Hashem, but rather the fear is born from his boininus, as I nikras, then we have a vetsas Allah and then you have the mother um, hovering over the children. So the point we're gonna have over here is that tshuva ilah, even though that it starts in the mind, it starts with bina, it's based in bina, it's based on Torah study, 
but its impact is felt in the entire person. And that's what the Rebbe is going to go describe. When a person studies Torah and contemplates the greatness of Hashem, that creates a change in the entire world, in the, in the entire person. The main Ava to Hashem is Dapkus Rucha Berucha. Is the connection of spirits. Kameshakosov, as the Pasuk says, Yishakeni Meneshika Ispihu Vegoimer Kenoida. Pasuk says that he kisses me from the kisses of his mouth. Of his mouth. You have a um, physical relationship in Hasidus is compared to in general is um, the analogy for that or the is a hug, is an embrace. Kissing represents a more spiritual relationship. Especially when two people, when they kiss each other on the mouth. So then what you have over here um, symbolically is the breath, which is the primius of the two people intermingling with each other and that is a izdapkus rucha berucha, the connection of the spirits. So that is the main connection that we're looking for with Hashem. And when that happens, when we have, when through Tshuva law, through the Torah study, and through contemplating the greatness of Hashem, we have this Izdapkus Rucha Berucha, Valzen Emma, regarding this, it says, Ubechol Nafshecha. So, Vahaftas Hashem Alikecha, Bechol Lavavcha, with all your heart. Ubechol Nafshecha. What is Bechol, what is all your soul? Start, so usually we talk about that even if it uh, requires of you even if it requires him serious nefesh but here the Alter Rebbe gives a different taich loving Hashem with every part of my being the love isn't restricted to levavcha to the heart but every part of my being seichol the seichol the, the love is, it takes, is, um, goes through and through starting from the seichol and to the Midas, Ulavusheim, and then the garments, the tools of Seichel and Midas, which are Machshava, Dibar Maisa, Ledafka Kulon Bayezbarach, to connect them all to Hashem. So, Tshuva Yilah again is the point of reconnecting our entirety to Hashem. It starts with our Seichel, it starts with Torah study, it starts with His Bainunos, it starts with Bina, it starts with the Yilah, but it causes an utter transformation. Dahainu. And the Atrebbe is going to go and Explain in each one what that means. Hamidais bimidaisav. And by the way, I, I want to clarify. When you become, when you have isdapkos rucha birucha with Hashem, it's not only that I, my, my seichel does what Hashem wants, and my midais does what Hashem wants, and my machshav de bermaisam, but because I'm one with Hashem, every part of me is an extension of Hashem. And it's a reflection of Hashem, which is very different. Not that every part of me listens to Hashem, which is, for that, you don't need tshuva ilad. And tshuva tata also, tshuva tata means that a person decides that he's doing whatever Hashem wants from now on. And at this, this level of his dapkus rucha berucha, tshuva ilad, the idea of connect, reconnecting to Hashem as the neshama was before it came down, means that you become Hashem's fasai tiftach, as we said early, you're a vessel, you're a vehicle for Hashem. Every part of you comes a vehicle for Hashem. So, for example, he says, When we say your midas become connected to Hashem and they become a vehicle for Hashem, so mahu rachum v'chulu. So, therefore, just as Hashem is a rachum, is a merciful, you're also merciful, and that's a midah. We're not talking about the action of giving tzedakah. You feel rachmanus, but that could be natural too. It could be, but obviously, this is on a. But the, see, okay, but how about uh, Hashem? Treachery. Hashem's Rachmanus is uh, even more. But it's not only about that. It's the why do you have Rachmanus? Because you're connected to Hashem. Your reality is Hashem because your mind is exposed to that reality, and that reality filters down to every part of you to the point that if Hashem is a Rachum, I'm a Rachum also because that's my reality, not because Hashem commanded me to. Some going also have Rachmanus. Sorry. Some going also have that. But what we're talking here, not first of all, obviously, when you have Rahmanas, because you're because not I didn't want to say you're emulating Hashem, because you're channeling and expressing Hashem through your Nishama. So obviously the Rahmanas is much greater than what uh, another person would have. But it's not the point, even if someone else also has Rahmanas. Why it doesn't say the Hainu Amidis that you should have Rahmanas. No. Mahu Rahum, why are you merciful? You are. Because you are 
channeling Hashem. You're one with Hashem, and therefore Hashem's midah expresses itself through you. If he's a rachum, I'm a rachum. The same thing is vaseichol b'sichle. My seichol is connected to Hashem. My seichol is connected to Hashem. Seichol b'chachmasi is barach hu iu na Torah. So what, that means that I'm studying Torah. Iu na Torah doesn't mean it means I'm I'm um, contemplating Torah. The Torah of Hashem's Chachma, my mind is channeling Hashem's Chachma. What kind of Torah are we talking about that the person's learning? A Gemara, um, a Sidus, what kind of Torah are we talking All of it. About? So if you're learning a piece of Gemara um, about the Zikin, the, 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 the Baal Tan, the Tan Yisod is that this will carry over to that. That, that, that your channel, your neshama channels some Hashem? Um, okay. Um, we, you have to remember one thing very important. Which is that Shuvah Ilah follows Shuvah Tata. If your neshama is damaged goods, it can't channel Hashem. It's severed. It's severed. Number first thing you have to do is Shuvah Tata. Reattach it. Once your neshama is in a pure state, after having done Shuvah Tata, then through studying Torah, you will actually experience this connection. And the Rebbe says two ideas. I keep on mentioning. There's the learning Torah and also Mizboidin Begdullah Hashem. These two elements. And through these two elements, and even when you're being Mizboidin Begdullah Hashem, it's Begdullah Hashem as taught in the Torah. And then, yes, your neshama will actually begin to channel Hashem. But... You have to do Chuvat first. And will this happen even if you're not aware of this you sort of the Baal Tanya? It's a... If you... Again, if you do both of these things... Yeah, if you do Chuvat Tata and Chuvat Yilaw, but you're not aware... You never learned Tanya, you're not aware of these you sodos, it will happen automatically? The connection to Hashem happens automatically. So you've accomplished the Chuvat. In other words, if you're looking to reconnect the Neshama to the way it was before and you've accomplished it. It would, it, would, it would appear, though, that for it to trickle down into our consciousness, for that you need the Yisbein and the Hashem. But the reality is that through, through learning Torah, if, if, if it follows, you know, with Rasha Amar Hashem Malach Al-Saper right? If the Tshuva Ilah follows the Tshuva Tata, just the learning Torah itself accomplishes this, yes. I would think that if you have the exposure to Ba'at, if you learn the Tanya, even more so how by that, it, it, it makes you even more conscious of what's going Correct. on. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. Moving on. And your machshava, your thought, is channeling, connected to, and channeling Hashem's machshava. Also through Torah. And also Vadibur and your speech. Bidvar Hashem zu halacha. Your speech is channeling the halacha. Even though it's true with all Torah, but there's something special about halacha. The Ratzin of Hashem is present even more in Halacha. For, for ha- the ultimate Bittl to Hashem is Nafke in Halacha. We'll, we'll get into that another day. When we get to Geris HaKadosh, Simon Chavtes. We'll talk about that some more. Welcome to Kosovo, as the Pasuk says, V'osim Dvarei Beficha. Hashem says, I put, when you're learning Torah, I'm putting my words in your mouth. To express this idea that through learning Torah, we're channeling Hashem. And Udvarei Asher Samti Beficha. Hashem says, my words that I'm putting in your mouth. So, so far we did what? We did Midas, we did Seichel, Machshava, and Dibur. What does it mean to channel Hashem and Maisa? Vamaisa, what does it mean to act like Hashem? How do you channel Hashem? Who Maisa is Vaka? And it's important over here. He's not saying Maisa is all the mitzvahs. He doesn't say Maisa do mitzvahs. He doesn't say that. When you're doing mitzvahs, you're doing what Hashem told you. That's not channeling Hashem. What is channeling Hashem? It's Daka. Because what does Hashem do? Lahach Yishruach Shefalim. To me, is it? What does Hashem do? Hashem is the one who gives life to lowly people. But gives life to everybody. Kamei Shekosov, as the Pasuk says, Ki sheishas yamei masa Hashem v'goyim, or Hashem made the world in six days, and he rested on the seventh day, ki noida, says, non b'makam acher, elsewhere. Hashem created the world in six days, and then he rested on the seventh. What was he resting from? It was hard for Hashem. He had to take a nap. What does it mean that Hashem is resting on the seventh day? He finished, well, he finished what he doesn't say he finished. He rested. What does it mean Hashem rested? So in Hasidus it's explained, based on the Kabbalah. Kabbalah says, talks about the Asara Mamaris. 
Shabaham Nivra Elam, the ten utterances with which Hashem created the world. This week's Pirkei Avas. So in the Sifri Kabbalah it says about Asar Mamaris, Lav Urcha de Malka Li Shtoi Bimili Dehadyoita. Which means it's not the way of the king. It's not suiting for a king to be involved in simple, uh, simple words, simple, simple yana. In other words, for Hashem, it's so to say, it's a departure from himself to create worlds. The worlds are so lowly <laughs> that for Hashem to preoccupy himself with creating the worlds is, uh, it's, Hashem has to leave himself, so to say, in order to do that. In other words, let's say, imagine you have a big Rashi Shiva and the kid comes home, one day, nine years old, and says, Tati, can you help me build a treehouse? <laughs> now, Rashi Shiva is interested in building a treehouse, like, uh, like I'm interested in dancing in ballet. But there's the, the love of a, of a father to a child, and it's a way to connect. Rashi Shiva says, yeah, and he goes and he gets some wood and some nails. Hopefully he doesn't hurt himself too badly. And he helps his son making a, um, to, to make a, a treehouse. Now, we all understand that when the Rashi Shiva is creating the treehouse, He's, de he's departing from himself to do that. That's not his world. That's not where he naturally is. And you might want to say, when he finishes, he's coming, he's Shavaz Vayinofash. He's returning back to himself. And that's what's brought down in Chassidus, Benegayat, to Shabbos also. For six days, Hashem was preoccupied in Mili Dehed Yaita, in mundane matters, matters that essentially don't suit him. Why? Because all of the world is. is that for Hashem to, to, to pay attention to Bashamayim of Aretz, to have an earth is Hamashpili. For Hashem it's Hashbal, it's a degradation for Hashem. That's Simpson? It involves Simpson also. On Shabbos, Hashem finally is back to himself. And by the way, we follow him. But maybe we'll talk about it a little next week. Next week is actually an interesting phenomenon, something we haven't had in many years. Rosh Hashanah, Shachali is Bashabbos. It's a very interesting phenomenon. We don't blow shofar, so this is filled with explanations about what the, the, the interrelation between Rosh Hashanah and Shabbos now that impacts blowing the shofar. But what do we see that for the entire week, and this is something which replays every week? It's not only something which happened in the six days of creation. Every single week, Sheshes Yom and Hashem. You know, Hamachadish Betuvi B'Cholim Tzamim Ma'aser Bereishis that Hashem is constantly renewing the act of creation. In other words, Hashem is constantly being Mechaye Ruach Shalom. Someone here asked. Only the lowly? We're all lowly. Who asked if we're... We're all lowly. Hashem, there's no difference between a centipede and you and, and, and the biggest tzaddik. They're all uh, Tashem. Compared to Bleakville, we're all nothing. So if we want to channel Hashem, what does Hashem do? Hashem is Mechayi Ruach Shvalom. Hashem does chesed with the lowly. Yes? I think when you say Hashem Shavad in Nafash, he did it for us because we try to imitate Hashem. And he knows everything is for us. So he Shabbat Vina for us. But what does it mean? To the question wasn't why he did it. The question is what does it mean? What does it mean that Hashem rests? That's what we just explained. It wasn't just the question why. You're answering why. I'm, I'm, I'm explaining what does it mean that he rests. After all, the, it doesn't require any effort in Hashem to, to, to create the world. It means the investment in something so lowly is stepping outside of himself, and on Shabbos Hashem steps back into himself, Kaviyachon. And this is something which is very important. When we're, you know, you can give tzedakah, you can have rachm, yirachmanes, you can be a bal chesed. If you want to channel Hashem, you want to have these tapkus rucha berucha, tshuva ilah, is when your chesed is in a way of the hachi ruach shvalim. When your chesed is to those who are least deserving. That's channeling Hashem. The, I mean, poor people, well, people or, or the least deserving. So the Medir says. Why, so why would you want to channel something someone who doesn't deserve? Medir says, I think it's in the Psik to the Rab Kahana, I think it says that Rabbi Yazar, he once came home after a day in Yeshiva and he asked his family, What happened today in the house? They said, Oh, we had a bunch of guests. They came, they ate, they drank, and they praised you for hosting them. But I said, eh, Nothing special. A little while later, he comes home and says, what happened today? Today we had guests. They came, they ate, and they drank, and they cursed you out. He says, ah, oh, <laughs> this is it. This is, this, is, this is where the mitzvah is. <laughs> we all know, first of all, in tzedakah gashmis, and physical tzedakah, there is that beggar who is annoying and smelly and, uh, and, and, and meshuga, mentally deranged. 
giving that person tzedakah, that's channeling Hashem. That's lahachi Yisroch Shvalom. And it's not only in tzedakah gashmi, it's not only in physical tzedakah. Because tzedakah means to give a person what, what they need. So you have the Meshugana who, who wants your attention. Because no one else is going, no one else is saying hello to them, and no one else is uh, willing to listen to their uh, to their twenty-minute uh, theory about uh, the latest conspiracy. And when you sit and you listen to them for twenty minutes, that's lahach yisroch shvalom. That's what they need. That's channeling the rebbeinu shleilam. That's channeling the chesed of Hashem. The person who works you in your office, who is arrogant and annoying. And he wants everyone to respect them and laugh at their jokes. He needs respect. He needs the hach. Is this person a shafal? Is this person a lowly person? Absolutely. That's that's where the abishter is. The abishter is to be found not in when you're nice to nice people, not when you give money to people who are who their uh, their stories you know tear your heart and you feel compelled to open up your notes. The person who uh, who, who you're repelled by. And that person, you still go and you give them tzedakah. I remember in Crown Heights, I don't know where she is now. Maybe, I don't know if she's still in this world. There was this lady on Kingston Avenue, a beggar, who used to scream at everyone. Not very good for business, but that's what she would do. She would scream at everyone. And um, it was difficult to give her money. <laughs> and if you gave her money, she would scream at you that it, she did, you didn't give her enough. <laughs> Any, anyone who 10 years ago walked around Kingston Avenue knows who I'm talking about. Right? Uh, I haven't seen her in a long time. I don't know where she is. No. And you, people, when they saw her, you went to the other side of the street. To, to, she, was, she was an annoying personality. But when you're talking about the, the essence of Lahachi Yisroch Shvalom, the essence of channeling the Eberster, the Eberster's greatness in tzedakah is that he gives his takir to the lowly. And we can do that also. Everyone... And again, those people who irritate us and those people who what they want, you know, I'd, I'd take $20 and leave me alone. No, he doesn't want you to leave me alone. He doesn't want you $20. He wants you to listen to him for 20 minutes. And he wants you to compliment him. And he wants you to pay attention. That's Daka. That's the Daka. So when you're channeling Hashem through Tshuva Ilah, so Maisa, what does it mean to act like Hashem? To act like Hashem means to give life. To the lowly and life again it means physically it means emotionally it means in every which way that they deem necessary because as we know tzedakah is not about what you think you need to give but they as the pasuk says right that it's about what the person feels they need and if the person feels that they need to have um a carriage to ride upon with horses and 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 servants to run uh, before them and announce their arrival the mitzvah tzedakah requires us to do that because tzedakah is not about what i think you need about what you think you need and there's that that's true materially but it's also true emotionally and spiritually this is the ultimate is dapkus rucha berucha the ultimate attachment to hashem the, the ultimate um, connection of spirits and dveikus when it comes from Ava v'chulu, but what kind of Ava? An Ava which is an Ava sikhlis, an Ava which is born from learning Torah, an Ava which is born out of his Bainunos in the greatness of Hashem. So Tshuva Ilah is a makeover of the person. And the truth is Tshuva Tata also is a makeover of the person. As discussed, Tshuva Tata takes a person who's a rasha and makes the person into a tzaddik. But the difference between a rasha and a tzaddik is smaller than the difference between a tzaddik and someone who is ois is simply cha- a, cha- a vehicle for and a channel for Hashem. In Seichel, in Midas, in Machshava, and in Dibra, and in Maisa. And that's the ultimate level of tshuva. Now the Alter Rebbe is going to go back and we're going to answer a question which we asked in the beginning of Perik Dalit. In the beginning of Perik Dalit, the Al-Tarebbe brought down to the Zayar says that there are two levels of Tshuva, Tshuva Yilah, Tshuva Tata. By now we're already familiar with what both of those levels are. Tshuva Tata, Hei Tata, Tshuva Yilah, Hei Yilah. And the Al-Tarebbe brings down over there that it's brought down in the Zayar that for someone who's Pugim Brise Yumeitzi Zer Levatala, someone who's over on the Avera of Zer Levatala, the intentional waste of seed, so for that person, tshuva tata isn't enough. Tshuva, you need to have tshuva ilah. And the asked, what does that mean? Why would you need to have tshuva ilah? Dafka for this, and what does that mean? 
So now we're going to answer that question. When a person is pigim the bris, makes a blemish in the bris through the avera of zer levatala, and Alter Rebbe says ve'ein sarach leimai, and of course, obviously, this applies to ba'aroyes. This applies to forbidden Relationship. relationships. In other words, when the Zayar says zer it doesn't mean exclusively that more so than bias asuris than forbidden relationships. In other words, even zer and certainly when it comes to Aroyes, Ishari, Suri, Bia, Deiraisa, Derabanan, or any other forbidden sexual relationships, whether they're forbidden, Medeiraisa, or Derabanan, we know there's a whole list of what's called Shniyais, La Royes, a whole list of uh, different people who the, the Isur is Medrabanan. Ki Chamurim Divri Esoy from Vukhulu, because they, even if it's Derabanan, it has the same impact, Vaad Rabba, that which is Derabanan is even more Chamur than Divri Teira. So the Aveira of Zerl of Atala, and certainly Bia Sasur is Poigim Bamboyach. That causes a pagam in the mind. Lachain, therefore, tikkun ehu, the tikkun is tshuva ila, which is the yisasik beiraisa, to learn Torah, mechachma nafka, which comes from chachma. So let's talk about this for a second. On a deeper level, in Hasidus, it talks a lot about the idea there's a special connection between the, the bris, yisoid, what's called the yisoid of the body, yisoid gufa oiz bris koidesh, and the moyach, and chachma. And the reason is because I could say something, I could do something, I could feel something. None of that is me. It's expressions of me. But in the zera of a person, when a person, the, in there lies the essence of the person, which is why it results in a child. And what is the child? The child is from the etzem of the father. So therefore, whether a person who wastes zera, or in a case of even worse than that, when the, um, the but a case of bias asuris, when the zera goes to a place of complete isra and klipa, so that's poigim ben moyach. It's poigim and the chachma, the essence of the person, the chachma, which is the, it, it's at the it's not it's not a pegam, it's not something which the blemish is not in a particular part of who I am. But it goes to the very core of I am, and who I am, and the core of the person is in the Chachma. And therefore, the tikkun for that is dafka to study Torah, which is Chuvayilah, because what is Chuvayilah? Is Yisasak Beiraisa. So everything is Midah Keneged Midah. I messed up my mind. In other words, my Chachma. I touched the very core of myself in a negative way. And therefore, the, the tikkun for that is, is Chuvayilah. So therefore, for all Averis, think about it, all Averis. All of it is about the action of mine, the feeling of mine. So therefore, for that, Shuvah Tata is enough. But for an Aveda which actually touched me to the very core of my am, which is in my mind, in my Chachma, which is at the, the Yisoyed, the foundation of who I am, for that I need Shuvah Law, which is the study of Torah. And also in a practical way, um, Avedas, the Aveda of uh, Zerl of Atala and also Bias Asuras, they involve the mind to a much greater degree than most of other Avedas. You, you do an Averi, you have a taiva, you eat chocolate cake, how much do you think about it? <laughs> you, want, you want to eat it, you eat it. Or any other Averis that we do, they involve more our actions, they involve more our midas. They don't really involve, you don't, it's not an ordinary amount of time spent. It doesn't contaminate your mind. If you eat something that's treif, that means, let's say, a person ate something that's treif. A person was machal Shabbos because uh, there, there was something that... It's not something which is sitting on your mind for three hours before and then three hours afterwards. It doesn't contaminate the mind. It contaminates that which the, the action was a contaminant. Well, there could be an obsession with, in, in, uh, by the assert, by the. Um, so the Zerla Vatala and Isuribia, these are things which we know they start in the mind. Not only they start in the mind, but they, 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 they preoccupy the mind. So there's a deep gun that happened in the mind. So therefore, Tshuva Tata is not enough. We need to have true vila, because what is true vila? True vila is cleansing the mind. That mind, which beforehand was uh, blemished by these Averis, now is being cleansed through studying Torah and connecting to Hashem. So that's why, when it comes to these Averis, for that you need dafke true vila. Now, in case you're surprised by this and you're like, what? Really? There are certain Averis that you need to study Torah for a kapara? Vugahert. We know Yom Kippur, we go to Shul. 
and we uh, we clap Hashemnu. I never heard the idea of, of learning Torah to be a but suddenly here we're finding out. Al is putting two and two together. That the Zayar says that um, it's the Zayar, a combination of the Zayar and the Rishis Chachma, right? They say that um, that Shuvat Ata doesn't help for for these Averis that were discussed, and for that you need Shuvat Ilah. Shuvat Ilah is studying Torah. Where is there a mucker for the fact that the Torah brings Kapara? It's not Torah, but let's go, look, look, let's look inside. V'zehu Shekosu, six lines from the top of page Sadiq Tess. V'zehu Shekosu, B'tana Dvei This is why it's stated in Tana Dvei By the way, just uh, Elio and Navi, automatically write the connection to the bris is, uh, is a clear one. In Tana Dvei Adam Avar Avera. If a person did not Avera, when it's Chayiv, Misal Amakim. And therefore, he's nischayiv even misa. In other words, he's obviously really he, he, he forfeited his life. What should he do and live? What kind of silly question is that? What do you mean? What should you do? What should you do? Someone comes and says, "I didn't have Vader. What should I do? What do you answer? You do tshuva. And what is the answer? What is the answer? Tanz velio. If you used to learn a one daf, learn two dafim. Lashan is Perik Echad. If you used to learn one Perik, Yishna Beis Prakim Vechulu. So we see over here the Talmud Veliyot very clearly the idea of Torah serving as a kapara. But we, we don't find that normally. So we must say that the Talmud Veliyot is talking about not every avera, but certain specific averas. Which for them, when a person is nischayiv misa of neamakim, when a person is chayiv misa for Hashem, for those averas, for them. The Talmud Veliyot is saying, for that, Tshuva Tata is not enough for you. For you, you need Dafka Tshuva Yila, which is learning Torah. Okay, but why do you have to learn two? Just learn Torah. If you learned one, keep on learning one. Why do you have to learn two? So the Rebbe explains. In other words, the, the Talmud Veliyot says that if you want to have a Kapara, you have to double what you're learning. By, for example, if you have a rope which has become severed, which is, that's the example we've been using throughout the Gersh Shuvah, right? That the Neshama is Yaakov Hevel Nachalase. The Neshama is like a rope connected to Hashem, and the Avera severs it. So let's say you want to tie it together. No, so if you make one knot, what's going to happen? Tear again. It's, it's not going to alter. Welcome my Kasher, the place of the Kasher, Kaful Machup. It's double. So when you want to reconnect the knot, it's not enough to make a one kasher, you have to make a double kasher. Nice. And then, what do you have over there, by the way? Let's say, if you have a rope, and it was uh, cut, so you, went, you made a, a double knot, and now you want to cut the rope. Where are you going to cut the rope? Where the knot is, or are you going to cut it in another place? Another place. Another place, why? Because the knot it's thick. is even it's stronger. Thick. It's even thick. stronger. Now, you do tshuva, uh-huh. and that's what he says, kaful and mechupal. Which is a, we know that a, a double knot is a kasher shel kayama, uh-huh. according to halacha. A double knot. Yeah. Also, by the way, you have a similar idea in, in bones. If chas v'shalom, a person breaks a bone, stronger than before. That area which broke when it heals is stronger than it was beforehand. And this is the idea of a shuva being even stronger than the tzaddik in that area, it becomes a kasher shel kayama. And we have here kafu, a kasher kafu l'mechupel, double and redoubled. And the, and the reason why, what's the double and redoubled? Because you have sai chuva tata, which is one kasher. And then when you put on top of that Shufi law, which is the second Kesher, so then you have the ultimate bond, strong bond with Hashem. The Kahu, the same thing is Bechevel Nachalasai, also in Yaakov Chevel Nachalasai, in the rope, which connects Yidin to Hashem also, when we retire it, we retire doubly Vichu. V'zehu Shamar HaKasuv, and this is what the Pasuk says, in Nishli, Bechesed Ve'emes Yechupar Ravin Vigaymer, you want, here's another raya that, 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 that the kapara comes to learning Torah, because it says chesed, how do you, how do you get a kapara for your Vedas? Through chesed and emes. What is emes? Ve'ein emes ela Torah. V'chulu. By the way, it doesn't say ve'emes hu Torah. It doesn't say Torah is emes. Ve'ein emes ela Torah. <laughs> There's only one emes, in case you're wondering, there's that emes and this emes. On Torah is also emes. No, ein emes ela Torah. Right? The only emes is Torah. So be chesed, the emes you You want a kapara for your avedus through chesed and emes, and emes is Torah. And the chesed we discussed earlier. When lahachi is ruach shvalim, what is the result of the emes? What is the result of learning Torah? Is the chesed. And once again over here, when it talks about the yichu, what? Yeah. 
I thought that Lachius uh, Shalom was, was, was a form of Stalker. So why is this Chesed VM? So it's Stalker VM. Stalker is Chesed, the same thing. Same thing? Yeah. I mean, uh, they're not mamish the same thing, but for the larger purposes of the conversation, they're the same thing. Yeah. Why do you have to do tshuva tata first before tshuva ila will help? H- hold one second. Let's finish, and then I'll I'll, I'll get to you. Okay. So this is another raya that again that we that there are certain times when you need toyra to have a kapara. Another raya is the Gemara says in Sechtos Rosh Hashanah talks about va'avoyin base Eli. We know that Eli was a king gadol in times of the Mishkan of Shilai. And he had two sons, Chafni and Pinchas, and uh, they weren't uh, 100%. they weren't hundred percent. And if you look in the Pashtip shot in the Pasuk, the Avera that they were over was Gilearayas. Mm-hmm. Gilearayas. And what does it say? The Pasuk says the so it said the Pasuk says that um, it was Nigzar, it was decreed upon all the descendants of, of Eli that they shouldn't live more than twenty years. And the Pasuk says that uh, Zev, I remember the exact lesson of the Pasuk, but over there in Shmuel it says that uh, the, the sin of, of base Eli will not be atoned by Zevach Umincha through a carbon. So the Gemara says, base Eli Umincha hu miskaper. The taka, a carbon, <coughs> can't be mechaper, the Veda of base Eli, aval miskaper, betoira, ugmilas chasad. The Gemara brings down that Abaya and Rava were both from descendants of, uh, of Eli. And Abaya li- Rava lived, if I remember correctly, 40 years. And Abaya lived 80 years. Even though that really... And the reason why Rava, because he learned Torah, he lived to 40. And Abaya, because also he was raising Gimel's Chasadim, so therefore he lived till 80. So once again, we Kedisa B'Sayf Per Kamad Rosh Hashanah, as it says in the, in the end of the first Perik of Rosh Hashanah. So we have over here is that we see that... We see that um, the that there is the idea that Torah plays a part in the kapara, and that is tshuva ilah. But that is specifically again tshuva ilah is good for every avera, but specifically for averas that involve zera levatola, and especially bias asuras. For them, learning Torah is not an optional layer two of tshuva, but in order to actually have a kapara on the avera, because it was poigim in the mayach, you need to have tshuva ilah also. But the idea of tshuva ilah, going back to the question that you asked, you asked why, why, why do you need tshuva tata? Just go straight to tshuva ilah. Tshuva tata is, um, is, um, Ramesha. Remember me a, 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 a siddur? A siddur or a machzer? Tshuva um, ilah is reconnecting the neshama to Hashem as it was beforehand. You can't do that with a damaged product. So first, you need to fix your neshama. If there was any avera, so once the neshama is pure and holy as it was when it came down here into the body, then it's ready to be to reconnect Hashem. But before you have that, you don't have that. But however, you are bringing an interesting idea, interesting point. And if you want to point out that if you meet Hashem next week, we're going to be doing tashlich, not on, not on not on Shabbos, but on Sunday. But the idea of Torah Tavlin is that, that you could go straight to Torah. Torah Tavlin means something else. Torah Tavlin means... It means that if that you hate horror is is uh, bothering you the way to... to it do stops you from doing Averis. We're not talking about... We're talking about someone who did Averis already. So if you did an Avera, you need to do Tshuva Tata before Tshuva Yilat. Yeah. So if you look in the Hiratsan, which is part of the Tashlich, pay attention to this year. So we say, "V'zochreinu l'chaim alachafetz b'chaim v'chasveinu v'sefer chaim l'mancha l'kim chaim v'nizka l'tshuva ila." She b'zeichet the tshuva ila ki yemincha pshuto l'kabel shav. So um, here we are in Tashlich. I guess the assumption is that by that point, tshuva tata already had taken place, and now we're asking Hashem for tshuva ila. But maybe it's possible to skip the tshuva ila, and that's something we're gonna have to explore maybe in future weeks, despite what I just said. Yeah, okay, here's what's going to happen. Next week, Mir Tashem, what I would like to do is I would like to recap the first nine prakim of Yigar Satshuva because we're at the point here already. We already know what Shuvah Tata is. We know Shuvah Yilah. I want to go through all the questions, all the different stages of Shuvah. Maybe talk a little about Rosh Hashanah. And then Mir Tashem, Shabbos, uh, the, the, during a Saturday, Mir Shuvah, we will continue talking about Shuvah Yilah, which is especially appropriate because as we will find out, a Saturday, Mir Shuvah and Shabbos Shuvah are mamish 
times for Truvela. Yeah, but, uh, 